Hello, everyone. How are you? Welcome to Thursday night, May 26. I had to think about it a bit. So there we've got some of our past art quilt projects. Today, we're working on our pet quilt. And while I'm waiting for people to find their way here, I thought I would work on a couple things. I'm working on the Alex Anderson um, Neutral Blooms. Loving it. Loving it. And I'm finding that one of my very favorite things is um, to hand applique. I just love it. It's so peaceful, so quiet. So what I'm doing right now, and don't worry, I've got my pet project I'm going to get ready and show you. But what I did is I drew this up from the templates, and then I printed out, I cut freezer paper into this exact size. I put this on a tray of my copier and made copies of this onto the freezer paper. And then that way, I can take the freezer paper pieces and put them, right iron them right onto the fabric. And then I cut them out, and I cut them out with a seam allowance. And that way then, let me show you. Hello, Linda Ramos. So here is one of the pieces. And I can then take some glue. Let me drop you down to show you how I do this. Now, I can use the Accu, um, the Appli, what is it called? The, that one, Appliquick. I can use the Appliquick tools, but since I'm just doing this for a moment to show you, with the freezer paper on there, if I put that glue, I can take my finger and just run the fabric over and then I have a nice clean edge to do my applique and I will take my stitches right at the edge and then be before I'm finished enclosing this on the background I will take and fish out that freezer paper. I This is the first time that I've used this freezer paper method and I'm very happy with it. Hello, everybody. Linda and Mary. Hi, Mitty. Marsha's here. Thank you, Marsha, for being our moderator and our very best welcome person. You are wonderful to everyone. Sometimes I worry that I have put too much makeup on my eyes. So, hello, Miss Judy Smith and Miss Mary. So I was just kind of wasting a little bit of time showing how I used freezer paper to make my applique leaves. I'm a huge, oh, thank you, Miss Marcia. I, my son was so impressed. You remembered his birthday. But this, I love needle turn applique, but I noticed that some of, especially if I hadn't done it in a while, some of my applique shapes got a little wonky. By using the freezer paper, this, okay, this is the cut side, but here's the side I've already glued and fold over, folded over, and it gives such a nice finished look. So I'm a very big fan of that. So I will work on the rest of those later. Okay, so now you remember that we worked on making... In fact, I hope Betty Middleton comes in here because I'd love to see if it worked for her. And if Jody comes in, let me know. She might not be feeling that good, so we might not see her tonight. But uh, I'll make sure to jot her off a little, you know, thinking of you. But anyway, she had another treatment Tuesday. But you remember I was making the, um, yeah, that freezer. Oh, you've never used it? Oh. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And the nicest thing is freezer paper comes off really easy. 
And if I thought I'd ever use this paddle shape again, I could keep those and use them probably a couple more times. But anyway, but the other night I was making the bias binding and I showed you about how I take a square, you cut it in half diagonally, and there's a little bit of a funny way that you take and fold it and lay it over and then stitch it because you cut it in half and sew it back together. And I was telling you wrong. I said it becomes a rhombus. It's not a rhombus. A rhombus is when the sides are different. These sides were parallel. They were going the same direction, the same spacing apart. It was a parallelogram. Sorry, forgot my geography. <laughs> So anyway, but I made 11 yards of this bias tape out of a 22-inch square of fabric. And the nicest thing is once I cut it all out, I don't have to sew those odd little, you know, um, diagonal seams. I don't have to do that. I did that when it was a nice big piece. So, yeah, very, very close. That is neat. That is neat. Your sewing time got less. Oh, honey, I am sorry, sweetheart. I tell you, with gas prices and things going up, it's, it's depressing. I'm sorry, Miss Mitty, sweetheart. Well, any chance you do get... Just so let me know. And if you're going to miss us too much and you want to jitsy with me, please let me know. Now, I want, to let, I want to let everyone know that I won't be here the next two Thursdays, I believe. I think I'm going to have to miss two Thursdays. I've got so much going on. And um, so I'm going to miss one Sunday and two Thursdays. But I think it's going to be good. Let me kind of recharge my brain and my creativity. But I got a lot going on, and I'm sorry I'm going to miss y'all. So don't worry. Yes, all this tape is cut on the bias. And I put on our site some directions to this. But watch this stretch. You see that? That's the bias. And the reason I did it on the bias is... Because, let me get the picture of the pattern. Because we're going to do the outside border stems and they curve. So you need it cut. Oh, thank you, Miss Judy. You need it cut on the bias so it will easily turn. And one thing I didn't know is it'll turn easier one direction than the other. I didn't know that. But either way, it will work. That's the way your mom told me. Yeah, I love that. Taking a square, cutting it in half, and you turn one over on the other, stitch it so it makes a big parallelogram. And you mark the lines all the way across whatever your depth, because you can use it for bias binding tape, like um, for the quilt binding. And if I were to do it for that, I would cut it two and a half inches. And when you would use this as if the edge of your quilt had curves, um, then I would use this. It's a waste to go to all this work if it's just straight borders. But if you're doing, this is inch and a quarter because I am going to fold it in half and iron it really well. Love my woolly mat. Sew it three-eighths of an inch from the folded edge. And then I'm going to use some of the plastic bias rods to be able to turn the seam to the back so it'll be hidden once you sew it on. And that's good. Ah, miracle tape. Yes. So I just wanted to show again, I took a class. Remember when we did the, I showed you the apple and then we did the pear? This class was taught by Anna Buzzolino and remember I told you I was going to be looking to find a, hopefully a second hand um, DVD and I wanted to make sure if you hadn't watched the one show I talked about that you saw it
I have it. And so I'm very, very excited. I haven't watched it yet. My computer is one of the newer laptops where they don't have a DVD tray. You know, <laughs> we pay more and get less. But anyway, but we're going to use our DVD player that'll let me watch it. Oh, well, thank you, Miss Mary. I think I'm really happy with it. And then I was here Monday instead of Sunday because, oh, my gosh, I did too much planting, too much working out in the yard when it was 90 degrees plus, and I hurt everywhere on Sunday. I just said, I sat in the recliner and said, I can't move. Nope. Can't get anywhere. And I first thought I would try to do the show a couple hours later. And then I went, no, I've got too much to do to try to do a show. But this Sunday, do not forget, we have a new Sunday project. And our new Sunday project is where I took curved pieces and turned them into an undersea world. And then... I made a, let me see if I can show you the back of it. I took all my crumbs and scraps and I made some brightly colored fabric. See it right under here? And what I'm going to do is I'm sewing a fish shape over it and then cut away the black fabric to reveal the beautiful fish colors. See right there? So it's going to be like my butterfly. I got so much attention for that butterfly. And I thought, yeah, I want to do some more of that kind of stuff. So thank you to um, whoops, Angela Walters for showing, giving me the inspiration for that technique. And she had, she was doing a competition piece, a challenge piece. And she did a section of curved piecing that was really pretty, yellow, orange, you know, bright colors. Then she put black over it. And then she, I'll put it on her frame. And I think she put it on her frame. She could have done it on her domestic. And she quilted a big feather across it big feather then she cut away the excess and it revealed the beautiful colors underneath so that i thought about that i think it's going to be a cool fish linda it's so good seeing you sweetheart i think we missed you oh my gosh jody oh i told him when you got here make sure to tell tell me welcome sweetheart i wish i could give you a hug and, oh, Tuesdays now, I just think of you all day long. But um, there's our Miss Wonderful Miss Jody. So, okay. So I've been talking about Sunday we'll work some more on the fish quilt. Jody, I've mentioned to him I've got a lot of things up in the air, so I'm not going to be here for the next two Thursdays. And I will miss, um, not, I'll be here this Sunday, but the next Sunday, I'll miss that. We've got a lot going on, a lot of running around. All right. So, and then I was telling them how I love using the freezer paper for the applique shapes. Really, really nice. And before I go tonight, I'll give you a quick little show of how I stitch down um, my appliques. Because you can do them by machine, but that's... That's something I just love. It's, oh, three down. Yay, Miss Jody. My gosh, you're a quarter of the way through already. See, that's, that's how I look at it. You're one-fourth of the way through. Oh, my gosh. That's wonderful. So, now we're going to, we're going to work on the pet project. And I worked on this last night late. I, I'm not as brave as Jody. She it, it can just take on projects that would intimidate me. And so I had to kind of get brave, you know? And um, hi, Kaz. So, okay. Let me show you. 
You know, I printed out. I tried to enlarge. Jody taught us how to posterize things. With only two treatments, it's shrinking. <gasps> That's wonderful. It's so reactive. Yay, Miss Jody. Woo! Oh, that is such good news. That is such good news. I didn't expect that they would see a change already. <gasps> oh, hon, you are Superwoman. Yes, you are. <laughs> so Jody showed us how to posterize. And so I took a picture of my grommet boy and he is my heart dog and I messed with it I had Adobe Photoshop and I messed with it you probably can figure out how to do it in Word um, Okay, I was just curious what's going on, but I'm so, oh, autocorrect drives me nuts, especially on my phone, you know, and it doesn't want to let me cuss, and I'm sorry, <laughs> sometimes I just need to cuss, <laughs> but here's the picture of my grommet that I just showed you, and I posterized it. Now... I would have liked to have done some kind of outline drawing, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. But I did a technique called cutout, where it divided the different colorations into sections. Uh, we are going to keep them coming your way, sweetie. We're going to just cover you up with love and good thoughts. Oh, that... You keep going, sweetie. You keep going. That's wonderful. And so the one problem I have with this drawing is I was running out of black ink. So it's not supposed to be orangey, pinky, greeny. It's not supposed to be that. But I could still see enough of the detail. After I... After I did the cutout, then there was one more thing that kind of really sharpened the different layers. And, oh, I'm hoping so. And then last night, I just sat there, put it on a light box. Let me show you. I put it on a light box, and I took an ink pen, and I just drew on everything. Now, I don't know... Let's see if it'll let me show you. But, whoops. But I took and drew on, ever drew the edges of everything. And every different change of color. See, I mean, I just, there's all this graduation. There about, we're about five different levels. Oh, thank you. He is my doll baby. But I, I drew the edges of everything. Then... I put it on the light box. Let me bring you out a little bit. Whoops. Oh, back out. Okay. So, then I put it on this light box. Whoops. And then I took my fabric. And I laid my fabric on the light box. And then when I turned it on... All of the, the lines that I had drawn before were able to show through. Show through. So, um, anyway, I, let me, now let me put you back up here and I can show you the lines I drew. And I'm going to need the photographs because they're, they're going to tell me which of the spots are lighter and darker, and all of that. Number your shades. Oh, one through six. I'm so glad Jody's walking us through this. I've never done this. So one being the lightest, six being the darkest. So see here, she wants me to go back and number the little sections, one through six. That is great. What I loved is once I did the tracing, I could tell what it was. I was like, oh, my gosh, I see it. Now, um, 
Jody, do I take this and make a pattern like on um and don't and, and Jody, if you're not feeling well, you don't have to type anything. But I was wondering, do I take now and use steam a seam and make a pattern of all the shapes? Um or do I cut the fabric out and then put steam a seam behind them? Because I was thinking about that. You know, it's like, hmm, how do I do that? But. Oh. Oh, that's, thank you, Kaz. Nothing's working today. I'm sorry, Kaz. I hate days like that. But I was looking at this. This is why, I mean, Jody has told me some of the artwork she does just have a thousand pieces. <laughs> it is like, whoa. But I'm going to do this. And luckily, most of this has larger pieces. What my next step is going to be pulling my fabrics. And I haven't done it yet because it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> I'm going to have to search all of my blacks and whites or unless I, I might do it in blues. I haven't decided. It might be fun to do it in blues. Jody says trace on steam a seam from the back of your pick. Ooh. Oh, I know why you said that. Okay, so Jody says to trace from the back... And I know why she said to do that. Because when you're using a fusible, you will it will be backwards. So if you trace from the back, then when you peel it to use the to use the fusible, it'll be facing the right way. Okay, everybody get that? So here is his picture. I turned it over this way, and I will trace the steam seam from the back okay that is great so now i need to trace all the patterns i need to pull all my fabrics and and just i'm going to take my time i'm not going to have to stress out with this so okay so you make sure you make your pattern from the back and I probably didn't need to do this on the fabric, but it will also help show me exactly where to put everything. It says lay parchment paper on the front of the pick when you start putting it together. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Now, I have, I don't have parchment paper, but I do have the golden threads paper. And I probably can use that because, let me show you, it is translucent. Let me get it open. It is translucent. Ah. Now, oh, I know probably why you want to do parchment paper so that you can, you put them together before you put them on the picture. Is that what you're, I bet you that's why. So you're kind of building it. Now, I could probably use freezer paper or my Teflon sheet. And that way I can put, you know, build up all the pieces. And that way you don't have to put tiny little pieces on the fabric. You put them all together. Oh, I'm getting it now. Okay. I am getting it. Remember to trace the pattern slightly bigger when a number one goes under a number two. That's right. Because when you put a darker over the light, you don't want any shadow lines showing. So remember to have enough on the lighter to go under the dark, not the other way around. Okay. You don't, if you, if I were to put white over top a dark color, it would certainly show through once you have it pressed on. Look, see how that this shadows? See here, and then look. And in fact, when I judged a quilt contest one time, there was a beautiful red and white quilt. But in all of the blocks, the, the seams were 
often turn to the white and that red telescope right through. So be careful about that. And so when you when doing this, the, put the light under the dark, the edge of the light under the edge of the dark so that nothing shows through. That would really ruin it. Okay, so I think now this will give you time if you want to participate to find your piece of art to enlarge it by doing the posterizing section by, by doing the posterized method. And you can even do that in um, Word if you don't have like Adobe. And then it's going to take me w a while. Okay. So the parchment is just so you can place your pieces in the right spot. Okay. So I could probably use, um, a, a, I have a light Teflon um, or a silicone type ironing sheet. But what I'm going to be doing in the next two weeks is trying to make these patterns, okay? And you saw how I turned it over. That way, when you make your pattern, then when you turn it over or put the fabric on, no, you t turn it over, put the fabric on, it'll be upright, okay? Then find yourself parchment paper, you don't have parchment paper, look for one of the ironing sheets that stick, lets things not stick. That way you can build up your picture and make sure you have everything right. Uh, you know what? It would be smart to start with something a little more simple, and but I wanted to start with my, my grommet. So, okay. Well, that gives me a lot to work with. And thank you, Jody. I should have thought this through ahead of time and asked you. I've been kind of, I got to be honest, I've been burning my candles at both ends. Okay. But even though Mark and I are going to be very busy the next couple weeks, I am going to have a little downtime. And so I thought, what do I want to do during my downtime? Because I need to just do something to feed my soul. Not for y'all or the show or the relatives. I... Oh, what is this? Let me see what's going on. Oh, yes. that's He, he was named. He was named Gromit. Grummy, come here. Come here. He's going to get groomed tomorrow. Come here. Come here. Let me see if I can pick him up. He is going to get groomed tomorrow, but this is Gromit. And uh, he is such a smart dog. And he's a ponderer. He likes to sit and ponder things. And uh, so... Mark and I love the English TV series, Wallace and Gromit. Love it. And so Mark came home because I was thinking of naming him Henry. I wanted a studious name for him. And Mark came home and, oh, since Gromit has a lot of white, you may be able to make one large pattern piece of your lightest fat. That's brilliant. That's less cutting up of that and then lay the others on top. Thank you. Thank you. So, and Gromit's 10 now, and he's promised me he's going to live to at least 30 <laughs> because he is, he goes everywhere with me. I mean, if I take a shower, he lays in the bathroom, waits. I mean, he's so good. And he loves to go bye-bye in the car. And every time we go, we do special things. I take him to a little park and let him run around, smell on everything and tinkle on everything. But he's my baby. But anyway, but he'll get groomed tomorrow and get his annual checkup. And he's never, I've always groomed him, but I've got so much going on. I'm too beat to try to groom him because he has 30 pounds and um, he's a big lap dog. But um, so he's going to get groomed and I think it'll be money well spent. And, um, but he'll, he'll probably be a little sad that mama's leaving him there. So anyway, okay. 
but I'm back going backwards to I am going to have a little time just to myself. And so I was thinking, what do I want to do just for me? We need to feed our soul. I went to the movie with my daughter last Friday, and it was um, to see the, the latest Downton Abbey movie. Wonderful movie. Wonderful. Good for the heart. Sad, but funny, but wonderful. It was wonderful. But anyway, getting back to me having a little time to myself. I thought, of all the things I've done, what would I like to do? And here we go. Another mandala. Yes, I'm doing another mandala. I looked around and around and around for free um, mandalas. And found this one. And, of course, I still don't have the new uh, printer ink. So it's unusual colors. Although it looks a little bit like um, Senna. What is it when you paint your hands like the Indian, beautiful Indian women do? Henna. Henna. It kind of looks a little henna-ish. And since Jody taught me how to posterize, I was able to enlarge it. And this is going to be my latest project. And yes, I do have this pattern now. So if you want the free pattern when I get back and I show you what I've done, if you like it, I will scan this in the computer and send you the free pattern. I put it on my long arm. Because remember how I, I'm not that good at using a domestic and changing all those directions. <laughs> I put it on my long arm, and in an hour, I had done half of it. So, that's excellent, because trying to sit there and do it, and I, when I tried to do it on a domestic, I made so many boo-boos that I had a lot to tear out. And so, now I'm excited, because... I can make more of these since I can put them on the long arm and more easily trace them. Because, you know, what I first do is I draw it using the light box or bright window, draw the pattern on the fabric, on white fabric. Maybe someday I'll try a different color background. And then I take and I, Nez Blossom, good girl, my little girl. And then I take batting. And this time I put two layers because it was low loft polyester. And I like that when I quilt it, I want to see that definition and the backing. So what, you're, what you are doing is you're pre-quilting it because you sew on every, every line on here gets sewn on your machine. And I thought about what color to do the, the sewing. I went with black. And I was tempted to do a metallic, but I thought, hmm, with everything I've got on me right now, I don't need to fight with metallic thread, if you know what I mean. But anyway, so I am very excited to see how this turns out. This is a pretty big one, but I love painting on fabric. I will take my paint brushes with me, and I'll take my um, textile medium. Because that's the key to using. You can use regular acrylic. Oh, yes, Mary. Oh, yes. And using acrylic, all you have to have is textile medium. And I went ahead, and the fabric I used is my prepared for dyeing fabric. Because if you don't have prepared for dyeing fabric, then whatever fabric you put it on, wash it real good. Hot water, detergent, wash it. Get any of the finishes off. It helps the textile medium and the acrylic paint to adhere better. So I'm excited. Oh. So, oh, I, I, that's all I, do you have any questions about the pet project that we have started? Do you have any questions? Jody did a phenomenal job of teaching us tonight. And 
Um, I always, it might take a day to show up, but when you, if you rewatch this show, the chat should come up. And sometimes you'll have top chat, but if you click on it, it'll drop down and just put live chat. And that means everything that's said gets seen. And that way, unless you can, maybe you can take a snapshot of the screen, but that will, I mean, her stuff, she's wonderful. And um, you know what? I might end up, maybe after the show tonight, I will tr catch that and put it, Let's. I'll start making an instruction sheet because she knows she's the expert. So thank you so much. All right, this is great. I think that yeah, and don't and don't feel like you have to start big. Um, start simple. Start small. Whatever helps you feel more comfortable. All righty. Let me see. Yesterday, since. Since we're going to be so busy, I, I thought about pre-cooking some meals. So I made three and a half quarts of chili and three quarts of spaghetti. But be careful when you make your spaghetti. If you use coarse ground pepper, don't use too much. Or else that spaghetti sauce will have a wine to it. <laughs> so, but anyway, so now I've got, and I've got some... Um, cauliflower soup and I've got you know some manwich and all these different things in the freezer so that's going to make a big difference let me tell you I'd rather cook three times the amount of one thing and have stuff to put in the freezer than cook three different times because you know what cooking gets in the way of creating of your art of your quilting <laughs> And now that I'm 66 proud years old, I don't want to waste time when I could be quilting. So, <laughs> oh, yes. I Going out into my yard, I live on a shady lot. Going outside, I get bitten. Just to let my chickens out, I get bitten. And I've been, been wanting to work on putting a little a, a little vegetable garden in. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to have to get, oh, I hate using, I hate using sprays, but I just might have to. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. So, oh, and the ticks, oh, are they bad? You know what? That makes sense because some of my plants that normally die off in the winter kind of made it through. So, yeah, we didn't get enough long-lasting cold. I've got, um, uh, flea and tick front line free, flea and tick for my dogs but you know they come in in the morning they've been outside running all through the woods they come right in jump up on the bed with me never know what they're going to bring with them so all right so now we know we've got some really good good information for this and, and you'll have a couple weeks that you know if you're at all nervous or something take your time and, oh, that's not good, Miss Mary. We don't want, one thing I always worry about is when are the snakes going to be here? <laughs> My daughter's the kind, she, she identifies snakes easier than I do. She'll go right over and pick up a non-venomous one. It's like, oh my gosh. When I was young, I did a little bit more of that. But now, and don't forget, here is the uh, over 11 yards of bias binding from the one 22 inch square of fabric. And if you want to see this, I think it was Monday night that I did. It was the last show and you can't beat this. So, uh, so anyway, let's, I have a few minutes and I'm going to show you a couple little things. Okay. Some people are afraid to do hand applique. And I used to be a person who would say, I'm not doing any sewing by hand. I refuse. And now it is my absolutely favorite thing to do. That's, uh, I'm looking for a needle. And I don't need just any needle. I need an applique needle. 
So, oh, here is one. In fact, this is a Milner's needle. And I'll tell you how I can tell. See how long it is? Milner did made hats and, and shoes and things, decorated shoes. But see, it's a very long, thin needle. So that's a Milner's needle. Straw needles tend to be long, too. Now, I like these to do applique with. Some people don't. Some people think they're too flexible. And this will end up get, getting bent. They usually bend before um, they get dull for me. But that's okay. When you're doing curved shape applique, it's nice to have a flexible needle. It really helps you. Now, let me see if I can almost. Ooh, come on. Yay. I did it. Yay. And I use a longer thread than you're supposed to. And another hint is if you have thread heaven or you have beeswax, feel free to rub them on this thread because it makes the thread slicker. It helps keep it from knotting up, tangling, and it also protects and keeps the thread prettier. Because every time you pull it through fabric, and especially this is probably going to hit paper, it tends to wear on the thread. I use it longer than you're supposed to, so you may. Oh, and it's a little bent. Yep. And I try to buy them, and I keep them in the little wooden, the little wooden needle holders. All right, but I'm going to just show you how simple this is, because. I, I've already appliqued this one on, and I appliqued my stem, too, onto the base, and let me see, appliqued that one, so I haven't finished this one in the middle, and the reason I haven't finished it is because the top part was giving me a little trouble, and I thought I might have to put a new piece of fabric on it. Let me bring over the light. Let me bring down the camera, and I'm going to show you how very easy. Let me, I'm going to get plenty of light in here. Hold on a second. All right. The one thing I recommend if you want to learn, if you want to do applique, the, the number one thing is get silk thread. Oops, let me get it. There you go. This is YLI silk thread. Now I'm going to tell you something else. Silk thread runs about six or seven dollars a spool, maybe even a little more now. But don't start out trying to buy all these colors. Buy neutral colors. So even though I'm sewing on grays, blue grays, tans, almost a brown, I'm using this nice gray color. And, whoops, not that one. Here we go. Come back up here. Now, I've taken the freezer, whoops, taken the freezer paper out of this, out of this one. These still have the freezer paper in them, okay? And in fact, whoops, I hope I didn't, no, I didn't fully close this one. And let me, while we're here, and I've got one I can do this with, I'm going to show you how to get the paper out. Whoops, and I didn't make my knot big enough. No, okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is take a big pen, pretty good size pen, and I'm going to come in here and kind of grab that paper. Just the paper. I can feel I'm in between the freezer paper and the fabric. And I'm going to kind of tug it a little. And you see how it starts to pull away? Then I'm going to go in with my hemostats. Or if you don't have hemostats, do you have some tweezers or something? Because what I want to do is pull the paper out and not damage where I've sewn it in. So just going to kind of come in here and gently, while supporting the fabric, give a little tug. 
Now, Alex Anderson has a product where once you wash it, about 80% of the stabilizer dissolves. But I was just using my freezer paper I've had for 20 years. Okay. I'm really good at buying whatever notion I learn about. But then I have to make sure to use it. One thing I don't like about the hemostats is once they lock, it is hard to get them open. So I probably, upstairs I was using tweezers, and I think I'd probably use that again. But it's good to get into the back of the fabric. But just kind of keep working to get the freezer paper out. Now, let's say you didn't want to go through all these contortions to get your freezer paper. I'll show you the other way that I was first taught. But let me tell you something. I do not like cutting unnecessary, unnecessarily cutting fabric. Okay. So now that this is out, just kind of press it back down, making sure this is turned under, and finish stitching. So here is the freezer paper. Now... If you don't want to have to pull out the freezer paper, what you can do is make a small cut here and take it out from the back. The problem, oh, you had a five foot one across your driveway. Woo! -hoo -hoo. And, um, but make a little cut there and you can take it out through the back. But you know what? I don't want any cuts on my fabric. Not if I can help it. Maybe I'm being silly. But, okay, now where is my needle and thread? I see some thread. Okay. Also, I have a problem with sometimes misplacing my needle and thread. So if you have one of those thread magnets that go on your clothing, that's a good thing. I'm going to tighten this back up right there. Then tuck that under. And what I do is I go back. I'm going to come up from underneath. And I'm going to go back about three stitches. Because, now let me see. You know what? Is that light making it worse? Let me see something. Hold on. Ah, I, I'm not sure. Okay, this might be better. Let me turn this. Whoa, hello. Okay, let's try this. I go back about three stitches, so I overlap because I want to make sure to know that this is going to hold this, where this junction. Now, here is... The stitch is just right there at the edge of that fabric, holding one or two threads at the edge. Then I go straight down, then I come up again right here. And if it's a little far in, go back and do it again. Because the closer you get to the edge, the more invisible your stitches are. And that's why, you know, the silk threads are expensive. And I first thought, oh, you have to have every color. No, you don't. You might want one red, one blue, one yellow, things like that. One green. But then I would just stick mostly with gray, different grays and different tans. Anything neutral. Okay. So, are you able to see? I hope... You're able to see. But the main thing is where you come up with that stitch, go straight back down, travel under the fabric, come up and just catch that edge. I try not to be a competitive person, but I have to admit, I do like trying to have invisible stitches. Now, I could keep on sewing up here. But since this gray goes on top, I'm just going to run the thread in that fabric, come up at the top of this gray. Okay, and I like running it under the fabric 
so that it's not loose and in any way in the way or can't peek out, you know, slip out or anything. So now that I've gone up to this gray, I've turned it around. And here we go. So just go straight down. Then see how you come right up at the edge like this and give it a little tug. And you don't want, you don't want to pull it too tightly, but you can't leave it too loose either. And you don't even worry about taking the paper out on this, this one until you've just about sewn all the way back to here. Okay. You take it out at the last minute because you saw when I took this out here, it wanted to pull it loose and I wanted to keep that crisp, crisp edge. So any question, I think it is going to be beautiful. I, I, oh, I, it, you know, they, she calls it the 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Or, Marsha, don't get upset, but she said it's like driving through Nebraska. Everything is, you know, it's more flat and everything looks the same. <laughs> but when you work on neutrals, there aren't lots of exciting colors to keep you interested. But right now, this is very soothing to my brain. Probably like your cross pieces, Jody, that you're working on. I Those are beautiful. Okay, so... Now, if you look, I don't think you really see any stitches. And that's, you know, you know me. I always tell you, don't worry about things and just enjoy it. And, and finished is better than perfect. But this is something I do love doing right. And you see, I'm kind of taking small stitches. They're about an eighth of an inch apart. But I find if I put them too far apart, then when I go to quilt it, I might catch the edge of the foot in it, something like that. All right, now I have just a couple more minutes. So now I'll show you. All right, now let me show you how I did the freezer paper. Okay, let me tilt this up just a wee bit. All right, there we go. All right, so let me move this out of the way. Let me get my ironing pad. And here are some of the fabrics that I'm using for the petals. And I've already made a whole mess of these things. But I know I still need some more. So here... I cut out some more freezer paper, and this is about the lightest I'm going to go with the petals, because do you see how light the, the fabric is that they go on? And I don't want the petals to get lost. I was thinking about this one, but when you put that on that, the problem is anywhere where it's just white, you lose that feeling of the petal. It is fun, isn't it? and it's nice because I can sit in the evening in front of the television and keep my hands busy. Oh, remember when I told you I would be sewing these on even though she recommended not? Here are all my lines, and I, the line I drew, whoops, let me, the line I drew under here to know exactly how to place it every one of these will be exactly the same and I'll just line them up. I line, I made, I made register marks on these so that when I put them back in order, I just match up these lines and all my flowers will still, still meet. Oh, Nebraska is lovely. I'll never forget the first time I landed, um, in Nebraska, and it, I came in right over a cow field. I thought, oh, don't don't hit the cow. <laughs> but it was so pretty. Okay, so this is, I'll take a scrap of fabric like this. And, you know, I think I might turn this into one of my, I needed another flower top part. 
So I just, whoops, let me go up a little bit more. And I just lay this piece, the shiny side of the freezer paper down on the back of the fabric. And well, you know what? I think this is not going to allow me enough space to tuck it under. And I do want a seam allowance. So here is a bigger piece of that fabric. But when I tore the colors, tore strips of the colors I knew I wanted in the quilt, I kept them in the bag with me so that I could do just this. Any little thing I needed. And I'll keep all of this in a large bag so um, that I have everything I need to work on the quilt. And I think this is the only one I need like that. So there we go. And I think I would like some of the flower petals. So here we go with these. I'll do two or maybe three. And I'm leaving. Whoops. I didn't quite leave enough seam allowance. Let me try that again. I want to leave seam allowance so I can cut the fabric a little, like an eighth of an inch bigger all the way around. All right, so now I've got these, and I think what I'll do is just rough cut these out. That way when I go upstairs, I can sit in my chair, watch TV, and cut these out just the way I want them. So there they are. So now I've got those, and I love this fabric. I got it at Pineapple Fabrics, and it's tan with a gray dot. How cool is that oh you know what isn't it Nash is it nebraska that has the national quilt museum or is it iowa it's one of those wonderful states so that's good stuff and good for you for being proud of your state miss marcia okay we could say that making this quilt is like driving on the eastern shore of maryland it's all the same. <laughs> they have to do all kinds of things on the road to keep people from falling asleep at the wheel on the eastern shore of Maryland. That is tricky. I'm going to do four on these, this, and we've got three more minutes, everybody. So do you have any questions for me today? Any questions? And anything... You would like to know. So don't worry when you don't see the art quilt. We're going to take two weeks off of that. But then we'll be back because we've got too many fun things to do. So I will be back and then we will work on more. Now, another thing. Let's say you had one of these colors and it was a little bit too dark. Well, then you could always put the freezer paper on the pretty, the dark side, and use the lighter side. So, you know, fabric has two sides for a good reason. But any questions? Oh, Omaha was, I thought Omaha was pretty big even back then. And yes, it is. Okay, so here I'm going to, I'll do two of these. I needed 198 of these petals. That's a lot of sewing. All right. All right, everybody. I think you get the idea with these now. And, uh, and this is just, I love having, I love knowing ahead what I'm going to be working on when the evening comes. I, what people have asked me before, how do you do so much? And that's because I do sewing at the machine during the day. And at night, I sit down with handwork. And, you know, we're always doing handwork for something. Oop, not big enough. I'll put that aside. But here are all of the different fabrics I used for the quilt. Alrighty.
Well, thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. It'll be June. And um, then we'll work some more on this puppy. And hopefully this Sunday, you'll join me while I work on the undersea, the fish thing. Because I've had so many compliments on that butterfly. And you saw how easy that butterfly was to make. So, and you know what? Making the fish, I'm doing more crumb work, you know, sewing little bits together. If the piece is too big, I sew it together and then cut it in half and do it again. But that is fun. Crumb piecing is a lot of fun. Look at Miss Marsha. She, Miss Marsha, you know how I tell you that you are, are the welcome wagon for this site? You should be hired as the welcome wagon for Nebraska. That's wonderful, sweetie. Yeah, don't you think, Linda, you're right. Um, I've looked at English paste, paper piecing, but all of that hand basting, that was a little too much for me. Because like I told you, let me show you this one thing real quick. So you get, let me show you this one thing. Because now I'm a fan of this. And this is the first time I've done it this way. I've heard of people doing it. But you take a good glue stick. And here, here is your piece. There's the freezer paper. And you just come along and run the glue stick right on the edge of the fabric and the edge of the paper. Now, I only do it the most a half at a time because the glue will dry pretty fast and then it's not sticky but look at this and you can do this while you're watching television look at that and i've always loved needle turn but i don't think i ever got needle turn that smooth but see that isn't that neat now if you have the appliquick supplies you can use those too. But I thought, you know, in a pinch, you can just roll it with your finger. And the freezer paper gives you enough support there. And it helps make that fold nice and neat. So it is my way to do it now. So I absolutely love that. And this way I can still do my hand sewn applique. But it looks pretty. <laughs> Because uh, as much as I tried to be careful doing needle turn, it sometimes wasn't as pretty as I wanted it to be. All right, everybody. Miss Jody, thank you for being with us. And thank you for teaching, even though you're having some really heavy-duty treatments. Congratulations that your body is already responding. Yay. And uh, I I'm really... Huh, I'm so relieved for you. That's wonderful. So I will see you Thursday night, people, in a couple weeks. But don't forget, I will be here Sunday, do a quick show for you before I take a little bit of a break. And uh, we'll work on that fish. I think that'll be fun. Take good care. Everybody, please stay safe. Yes, I didn't bring anything up tonight because if I do, I might cry. And uh, I'm ready to be gone, done with guns. So, But that's another issue, and I want you to have at least one place you can come to where you don't have to think about it. I understand. So I love you much. Do something good for yourself. <laughs> so much is coming at us so fast and furious. Take good care of yourself. Feed your soul. Okay? We, we can't do but so much, so we have to take care of ourselves. Take care. You are the best. Bye-bye, everyone. See you Sunday. Good luck with your pet projects. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>